Hey Martin, welcome to episode 35 of Illuminating Rounds. How are you doing? Doing well, thanks Dave. Yeah, absolutely. How are you? I'm, I'm okay. I've got a cold. I don't know how I've caught a cold. <laughs> I've not been out. I've not seen anybody. Yes. <laughs> Somehow I've caught a cold. Um, Ridiculous. Yeah, Ridiculous. Absolutely. Yeah. And but, I've been in contact with hundreds of people and I do not have a cold or anything else. You're doing so okay. Long may it stay that way. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. You, you are a, obviously you're at the at risk category, aren't you? So, <laughs> are we talking about my age or my or my weight or what are we talking about here? <laughs> I've got a list of things that. <laughs> so, um, you've been okay. Life's life's okay. Yeah, yeah. Lots of lots of developments. Yeah, it's been a really really hectic week. I've had all sorts of things uh, going on in terms of my career for the for the next few years. So it's uh, it's been it's a very interesting time. Going through a bit of a transition at the moment in my life transitioning towards <laughs> being mainly an ASL player instead of mainly a person who for a living. So many jokes I could make there, but I didn't want to make any of them. Um, so, okay, so now you're going to so you're going to go to a little bit of part-time, is this for your teaching? That's right, that's right, yeah. And did you for, give for ASL? Year. Did you give ASL as the main reason? Yes, yes, I explained to them, it was absolutely, I, 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 I think I was just mentioning to you actually that my head teacher has now watched Illuminating Rounds, so I filled her in on all the important developments in my life at the moment and there's no doubt the she second hasn't, she second. hasn't said what she thought of it at all well <laughs> i was gonna say it's the second female viewer that we've had possibly ah interesting yeah and maybe our first female patreon well hey who knows who knows talking of which um we have a new patreon uh buell chandler so thank you Buell, very much we appreciate it we hope thank you're gonna you. yeah we hope you're gonna join the uh the tournament uh in january if you want to be part of that get onto Patreon, uh, and you can do that. So I've got a question. So does Buell get to go into the giveaway today? He does. So he does. Giveaway. And here's what the giveaway is. We are going to give away some packs of minstrels. I um, I picked these up. Um, so we're going to give away four packs of, of these little rascals for your face-to-face -face eating treat pleasure. Um, you can share these, obviously, with you and your... ASL partner. Yeah. Not loved one, ASL partner. <laughs> the, the important people in your life. Um, <laughs> by the way, I haven't mentioned this for a long time, or I haven't mentioned it at all, but I wanted to mention it for a long time. John Payne, in one of the, he's one of our patrons, in one of the um, uh, comments on YouTube, has talked about his wife who plays ASL, and not only does she yeah. play ASL, she rolls low. Now, is Ooh. that a curse, or is that, <laughs> is that a like, a dream come true i suppose the ultimate would be if she went to tournaments and rolled for him <laughs> why couldn't that she play be... herself <laughs> that would be the ultimate i mean yeah i think do you know what i don't know that i've got a partner who played asl i think i'm quite happy with them not playing asl actually you know right. it's just something you can do different i mean do you know what i mean i was married for a long time as you know yeah and like you know, I never got involved with all the her hobbies, like sort of the cleaning and the, and the washing up and stuff like that. So I don't know, I'm not sure I wanted her to um, to get involved in my hobbies. But I don't understand what went wrong with my marriage, if I'm honest with you. <laughs> Well, anyway, let us on a yeah. let us on a, on a sort of postcard. <laughs> <You> can... <laughs> Have you got any thoughts? Yeah, tips for next time. Yeah, who knows? Okay, all right. So let's uh, yeah. let's do a patron giveaway for the first yes. of our four packs of minstrels. Right. We will send these anywhere in the world. So I need first of all, um, I'm going to get our list out for us. Um, okay. All right. So if you would like to uh, do this for us, Martin. Yeah, so let's let's do our Patreon giveaway. Um, so Martin, I need a number from you for one to forty-four. It's the, uh, one the usual. To forty-four. It's, yeah. And so people know where can they find out what number they are? Can they, they see the sequence? Yeah, if they if they count off on the end credits, they'll see themselves uh, in alphabetical order on first name, yeah. um, all the way through. Uh, so I don't have this on a spreadsheet, so I'm going to be counting. Okay. Count away. Okay. Right. Give me another. I'm going to go one to forty-four. Generating now. Sixteen. Sixteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. It is Jason Wirtz. Jason, you have some minstrels on the way. Four packs of minstrels. Enjoy them. Um, I hope you don't just get these normally in <laughs> wherever you live. <laughs> but. Um, Okay, all right, good stuff. Yeah. 
thanks again everybody our patrons who are supporting the channel um, and if you do want to join that tournament uh, in January um, or if you want to give us a game um, now Martin you, you've had a, a chat with someone um, yeah. we, do get, we do get requests don't we to play and we're more than happy to do that but I think we have to prioritise uh, patrons over yeah. um, anybody else just because we've, we've turned a few people down now so if you're mm. a patron and you want to play um, that's absolutely fine we will try and slot you in at some point um, and yeah I think that's that's our aim isn't it that's great, yeah. Okay. Okay, so, so today, what are we going to talk about? So we have got a number of things that we want to talk about today. We're going to, we're going to go through the final at the end. That's the, uh, the final from our tournament, which is yep. your game. Uh, we're going to be talking about Scenario of the Month. I think you know, you've got a few things to say about that, obviously, on the ASL Scenario Archive. And we are going to be talking in depth and perceptively about playtesting. <laughs> We are, we are. Let's talk about it. So there's, there's good and bad about playtesting, isn't there? Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know how many people get involved in playtesting. I would suspect it's not as many as would be able to. I think people sometimes think that they're not good enough to play uh, and things yeah. like that. Um, so we thought we'd separate this into the, the good and the bad of, of playtesting. Mm. Um, mm. And, um, I mean, do, do you want to fire away? What's 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 uh, some of the good stuff that you can think of? For okay, okay, okay. So, so, so first... First off, and it was really you who came up with this one, really, the idea that it kind of might force people to play something that perhaps is out of their comfort zone, you know, the you know, tendency to pick a sort of perhaps similar styles of scenarios all the time. And if you play testing, you get something through that's new, it might be quite novel, it might be, it, it might be, you know, trying out some unusual rules or whatever, uh, perhaps a new map or whatever, and you forces you out of your comfort zone. Yeah. You might have yeah. to improve your play, try out some different rules. Exactly, exactly. And mm. it's in a non-competitive environment, isn't it? I guess that's the other yes. kind of thing you're playing in a very... Do you know what I really enjoyed? Last time I was playtesting with you, we, we, we played at such pace simply because we knew it didn't actually... You know, we weren't playing to beat each other. We were literally playing to find out what the yeah. what the kind of strengths and weaknesses of the of the situation were. It was, it was right. interesting to play like that, yeah. Yeah. And sometimes you can throw away box cars or throw away snake eyes just because... Again, you mm. know that it's it's going to twist it. Now, there is an art to playtesting, isn't there? And I, I don't proclaim to have that art, but I would imagine there's a, a fine art between knowing when to accept a dice roll and when to think, well, that's actually mm. swung it the whole way that you, you wouldn't necessarily want to see it. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? So I guess my my statement against playtesting to start with is that you're not playing necessarily your own stuff. This touches a little mm. bit on, you know, last week when we talked about the one of the beauties of playing face to face is you get a little bit of value out of your own stuff you've bought, you know, you get to, you know, reduce that dollar per hour number that you're, you know, we kind of like to like to get value for money from, from what we've bought. Um, we've got so much unplayed stuff and suddenly then you're playing other items that aren't necessarily published. Uh, that's, that's kind of a, a bit of yeah. a negative for me. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Um, I, I guess, in a positive thing, it's 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 a way of giving back to the hobby. I mean, it, you know, yep. you're, you're giving you're giving your time to, to to do something. Kind of makes you, I know, you, you're sort of almost seeing the hobby from like a different perspective, from inside, perhaps. Yep. Um, yeah, someone's got to do it. You know, it's 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 not something that's ever going to be well paid, is it? But if all people right. don't do it, but yep. usually not paid at all, of course. If um if if people don't do it, there would be no hobby. So right. I think you know to some extent. If you enjoy playing ASL, you know, it makes sense to, to kind of give something back in right. at some point. Right. Yeah. I, I always think there would, there would be a an industry available to have a playtest kind of company, if you like, where scenario designers or scenario publishers could pay uh, an amount of money and would feed in a scenario and would get fed back X number of results. Maybe Maybe that's what we've got to set up. Um, and I appreciate that you know bringing money into it is not necessarily an attractive no. thing, but you know we shouldn't make, we shouldn't shy away from the fact that publishers, although they never make huge money, you know there is a little bit of money to be made in in ASL scenario production, and the the, the slight difficulty I have with it is that you can often play test to make someone else a little bit richer. I mean, you know, it's, mm. it's kind of the the you know, I, I guess one of the things now. A little bit depends on whether you're going to get rewarded in a free pack or stuff like that. We, mm. I mean, we play tested for Hacker Palais. We didn't do particularly. We did, I think, one, one maybe two scenarios. Uh, we played it, I think, four or five times. I can't remember. If we, we played it a few times. Mm. We didn't get we anything. Did, we, a few, more, more than two or three, I think, in the end. I mean, not millions, but... Uh, right. We did, but we didn't get anything from it, did we? We, we got yeah, credits. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, 
but there was nothing else. We didn't get a free yeah. pack or anything like that. Mm. Um, and I, I, you know, I was quite happy to um, to play test because I felt like you know we are giving something back. But the idea of having like you know access to a whole bunch of really good players who were able to, um, you know, if you could get hold of that, and you would then pay these play testers based on their their feedback, and then you could kind of collate the feedback and then pass it back as a a play tested yeah. scenario. I wonder if that would be. Well, I'll tell you what, I don't know if it's a good idea or not, but I'd certainly, if that was my job, I'd get up in the morning, I'd have me, I'd have me porridge, and yep. I'd go to work with a will. That'd be, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, no, exactly. Of ASL's dreams is to wake up, a dream is to wake up in the morning and go to work as an ASL player. But, do, do, you know, they say about don't ever turn your hobby into work because, you know, you might end up... Yeah, you, know, you just get a new, new hobby, can't you? That's true. <laughs> that's true, that's true, that's true. That's true. Um, what about the the, the prob- probably possibility of ruining a scenario? So, you know, if we've played a scenario and we've played it three or four times, we can sometimes bake in how we think a scenario should be played, mm. and we might have just got completely the wrong idea. And we've we've certainly had that, you know, in, in episodes that we've done uh, on Illuminating Rounds. Is there an argument to be made that says, you know, there's a concern that when you're playtesting, that actually you might mess up a scenario and you might give a lot of feedback back? And actually, you might have misread, not misread, but misplayed the scenario a little bit. Um, hmm. how, how do we avoid that? And, and is that a real concern? I, I think the only, I think it absolutely is a concern. And, the, and it's not just a question of that the, me and you, for example, might play a scenario, we might we might misread it. But in fact, we're playing it at, at an intermediate level of, of, of skill, aren't we? And, yep. with, our, and with, with our little culture, because we play each other a lot, we've got our own little culture of ways that we tend to, yep. you know, I, I get to guess I know how to check what you do and you know how to check what I do. Yep. But if I play, you know, if, if I as an intermediate player play a better player, that scenario will play differently. If two new players play it, it'll play perhaps differently. And I don't know how you can make sure that a scenario is going to be balanced in any situation, except that you get lots of different types of people to play it. Right. Of course, that that's 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 very very difficult perhaps perhaps mmp can draw on that kind of support i think it must be quite difficult otherwise you you know all of the other publishers i suspect i've got i have no no inside knowledge about this so, so i apologize to them if i'm wrong i suspect they have to they have to rely on kind of very experienced play testers who, who are likely to see the weaknesses mm. in, the, in the scenario yeah how, how good do you have to be to be a play tester I don't think you necessarily have to be a. I mean, I don't think you have to be a brilliant player, um, as long as there are there are a variety of other people playing it. That's my that's my feeling. I think you, right. whatever level you are, you're going to contribute something. Right. Um, I think it's useful, and you're very good at this. Uh, you know, looking at the scenario card and, and reading the things that are perhaps badly worded in the rules, perhaps, or, or, or don't use the words from the rule book. You know, you. The, and, and there are certain conventions, aren't there? Certainly, like in victory conditions, there are yep. certain conventions of how you say things, yep. uh, which you know, certainly a new a new designer perhaps wouldn't necessarily, be, you know, would perhaps make, get wrong. Right. Um, and I think I think I think if you can offer you know, a little bit of guidance in that kind of area, that's good. Yeah, I sometimes think though that in a way that's the easiest that's the easiest yeah. part because I'm mm. assuming that someone at MMP will catch that if it was an MMP product, for example they'll catch yeah. it anyway and someone, yeah. someone will catch that kind of stuff so yeah that's um, true but that's yeah true. i mean it's, it is yeah. one of the ones what else is good about playtesting well you might get some free stuff yep. um yeah you might well get some free stuff in fact i think it's quite yeah quite often you're gonna you're gonna get some you're gonna get some free yep. that can't be, yeah that's great yeah that's yeah. great stuff yeah no that, that is true that is true um i think one of the bad things about it is that you end up playing the same scenario over and over again yeah. And that can feel like work. Um, mm. I know, you know, we played, uh, was it 20 years later, and we played it three or four times, and I think even once we played it correctly. But yeah. <laughs> by the end of it, you are kind of thinking, oh, you know, this again, all right, let's let's yeah. let's yeah. kind of go through the motions a little bit. Um, and I don't know how many times you've really got to play something before you've got a good feeling of, yeah. I mean, it must be at least once per side and, and probably a third or fourth time to... Submit. And there's no guarantee that as you... As you you play test the scenario and you send feedback, there's no guarantee that the designer will choose to use your feedback, and it might very well be that they're they're, they're hearing something somewhat different yep. from somebody else. Yeah. Yep. So even sort of subsequent versions of the scenario you played don't necessarily haven't necessarily taken on board fully what you what you've said. Right. But of course, that doesn't mean that you're right. Yeah. But it's a 
you know, it, it could be frustrating, couldn't it? You know, you are not in control of it. You're only yeah. able to give your um, your advice. And and that goes kind of a little bit hand in hand with the the idea of this, you know, this feedback. And if you are being listened to or not being listened to, or whatever, if your name's on the credits of a playtest uh, pack, and that scenario turns out to be, or that set scenarios turns out to be unbalanced, it must be quite frustrating as a playtester to either have been able to give that feedback during the mm. playtest, and either it wasn't listened to or it was listened to too much and maybe it swung the scenario a yeah. bit too far. And then suddenly your name is, I don't think necessarily, you know, any way tarnished, but it might feel quite bad. If I, if I was playtesting one scenario particularly and, and playtested it a lot, gave the feedback that I felt it was unbalanced, it still got published, and then I was somehow, you know, was given credits to that playtest, it can yeah. look like, you know, maybe maybe I didn't do my job properly or maybe... yeah. yeah. Um, you know, yeah, I can certainly imagine feeling like that, or perhaps feeling like that. Yeah. yeah. On the positive side, yeah. Um, you know, you do get to see some of the exciting stuff that's that's perhaps coming, you know, it's coming down the tubes or whatever, and mm. you can get to see it before everybody else. Yep. Be a part of it, its development. Yep. Um, you know, I mean, that's an exciting, that's an exciting opportunity. Absolutely, yeah, it is. Um, and the other thing is, you also get to talk to the designers, and you listen to the crazy amounts of research these guys do. Um, and yeah. We're talking to some designers right now, and it was amazing to hear the, the levels they go to, you know, the yeah. places they visit, the photos they take, the check... And there's a little bit on the back of, I think it's, is it one of the Lafrentier Le ones, um, where, they, you know, they're standing on hexes, taking photos of yeah. target areas to make sure the line of sight yeah. is good. And That's right. It's incredible well, to hear. Well, I mean, um, the, Dan Dolan was, was, was telling us, I think, Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. sure. Yeah. But Dan though was he was doing the map for for the um for Dinant. Yeah. Asked Martin Mayers if he could photograph it because he was going to France on holiday with his wife and his wife went, Oh, let's go to this historic town Dinant. Yeah. And he only went there for the specific purpose of photographing under the bridge to right. see if there was a line of sight from Brilliant. one bank to the other. That <laughs> That's <is> fantastic. <laughs> and and we, we play these games with no knowledge really of that, don't we? I mean, we yeah. you know we just push counters around and we you know we have a good time and we miss out. So there is a huge amount of recognition we have to give playtesters that we you know we don't even look at the credits often for who who has uh, played. Of course we don't. Of course, don't. and they are of course the, the unsung heroes aren't they i mean you there's a certain amount of you know you will know the names of the most famous designers yep um but who are the best play testers you know? yeah 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 that's i mean it's... they sometimes get a, a counter named after them an official mmp counter. i think yep. that's quite good that's i mean that's a bit that's 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 arrived in the world i think you know, just uh... mr eight minus one all right <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if you my... noticed my uh, Sergeant Parker was not named after me. No, but he is in my world, and yeah. I have him on every chance. In, in the bypass thing of Toby the other week, I had you being, a, being overrun and all sorts. Of, <laughs> well, that pans up. Um, my grandfather was a, was a sergeant, so so it's. Uh, I think of it as my grandfather. After that's me. that's even better, even better. Um, <laughs> what about the fact that you might play a scenario and it might not even get published? That's, yeah. Yeah. that happens as a as a playtester. I believe. It happened to us with Packer Pablo. I think yeah, we played a scenario that wasn't published. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. That's that's the life the, the life of a of a playtester, isn't it? Exactly. So, what about how, how do how do people get involved in playtesting? Well, I think I think if you if you put your name out there, I think you you will have your hand bitten off. I yeah. don't think it'd be difficult to find yeah. find people. Yeah. Um, I, I, I just just simply you know, just go to the websites of any any of the third-party publishers or even MMP yeah. and, and find a contact and yeah. send, send an email, I'm sure, that, email, so we'll, yeah. we'll post on the Game Squad, actually, or, or, or yeah. similar. Yeah. I'm sure exactly. that you'll get responses straight away. Yeah, and we have to um, we have to do a little bit more playtesting. We've, we've got so many mm. commitments, but we, we do have to yeah, yeah. Yeah. do a little bit, and we're going to... Uh, those who know, know that what we're doing, and we are we are trying to, to help out with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any Anything to finish up on, Martin? Any... any... A key, key message um, no, no, I think this is something people should do. You know, if once you're in the hobby, you know the game, you, you think you're a you know a reasonable player. I think this is something you should you know. It's a, it's a way of giving something back. I think yeah. it's, it's fun, and you get to, you sometimes get to meet new people, as you were saying. I think yeah. it's uh, yeah, it's a part of being a well-rounded ASL okay. character. Okay, you know? <laughs> I'll, I'll say that. That sounds good. That sounds good. All right, good stuff. So, if you, uh, you get a chance, do some playtesting, and mm. um, yeah, and maybe you've got some playtesting stories you could share with us forums or, or wherever i'd like to hear hear some of that yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. um okay 
talking of giving back, you're going to do something soon yes. that we've yeah. been promising for a long time. Yeah, we've been promising for a while. I mean, I did most of the work for this um, a very long time ago, or, or a few, certainly a few months ago. So, uh, so basically, what I have done is I have uh, created a video, and I go through on Vassal in painful detail how to play a simple scenario of ASL from setting up, from rules about setting up. I talk about movement. I calculate every every attack. It's not going to be for everyone watching this video but i think for someone coming to full asl from starter kit it would be quite it might be quite a, a useful resource and somebody certainly coming to asl for the first time completely fresh i think it would be a very good resource it's essentially perhaps how i would perhaps show somebody who i was about to play kind of the rules and yeah. just sort of take them take take them all the way through a little, a little mini scenario uh, which, uh, which you said was quite exciting. Do you know what it was? And I, I've said before, you know, I got invested in watching it. It's the kind of minimum viable, you know, we're to our MVPs, minimum viable product in all sorts of industries. And, and I think in a way, this is like the minimum viable scenario where there are tactical choices to be made. There is a little bit of decision making. Um, it told the story really nicely. It was a very nice, nice story to watch, and yeah, I, I enjoyed it. That's, that's what I was looking for. Those those compliments. That's what I was looking for there with that you got question. It. Yeah, you got it. yeah. It, it, it is a very very simple scenario. There's a handful of, um, of, of you know just first line Russians, first line Germans. The Germans can capture a little a little, a little farmhouse, yeah. Um, and um, yeah, as you say, it's, it's very very basic ASL, but it just gives you that opportunity to go through all the basic rules. And and, and you know, if people like it, if it's uh, if people are interested, I. You know, it, we, we, you know, we could develop it and bring, bring some, some, some out that uh, develop additional rules perhaps afterwards. So hopefully that'll be out by the weekend. Brilliant. Okay, sorry, it was a little nose, nose blow break. Um, so yeah, yeah you said so it's going to be out by the weekend. It um, will be out by the weekend. All right, yes. okay. And talking about the things that took us far too long to do, because <laughs> we've got a theme of these, yeah. uh, we did a, an interview for the Banzai guys uh, yes. in Texas ASL. Um, that's going to come up in one of their um, upcoming magazines uh the banzai stuff is fantastic it's top top draw if you haven't come across the banzai or if you have and forgotten about looking at the most recent one banzai guys do a great job of putting out a great uh, magazine and they they gave us a little interview which we we took <laughs> months <laughs> to reply back to but we, we've done it now so uh, apologies to those guys and thanks for um I, I think some of the uh, scenario analysis in in bands are some, some of the best scenario analysis that there are some absolutely outstanding ones there. Yeah, and, and do you know something? Yeah. It doesn't age as well. I think sometimes yeah. with you know we you know they, they talk in an interview a little bit about the difference between printed and video stuff, but the stuff that they do on uh, the printed material or you know PDF, it it doesn't age at all. You could go back and look at a five year old episode or issue, and it's as good as reading it today. You know, in a way, there's you know ASL doesn't change enough. To make anything other than, you know, just good, good, good material, good material. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree with that. Mm. <clears throat> Excellent. Okay, so how about we take a look at the final, Martin, yes. the final right. of the ASL right. tournament? Let's flick over. I, to I it. can't wait to see this, and I am seeing this live for the first time. <coughs> uh, and I'm still not well, but I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna bang on through yeah, this. Soldier, soldier on. Soldier on. Okay, right. So let's have a look at this. Um, so Martin, have you? Oh, let's. Hang on a second. Okay, so here we are. This is uh, Brazil's here from the March Madness pack. Uh, it's from the ASL uh, full rulebook pack, uh, MM66. So what do we got? We got the Brazilians, who is me, the which are the American counters, up against Dwayne Duval of the German defenders. Now, here's something that you might not have known. Dwayne, I know you know, only ever plays his brother. So technically, he's only ever been beaten up until now by his brother, um, and he always plays the axis, which is quite an interesting thing. So him and his brother, he just takes the axis side. So he just plays Germans pretty much non-stop. Um, never come across that before. Never heard of somebody. Uh, make that. So, I mean, I've known people who who like to attack. Yep. But I've never I've never come across somebody who likes to be a particular country before. Right. That's it, exactly. Yeah. All right, so what's this scenario all about? So we've got um, eight turns, uh, eight full turns, to have this. There's not a huge amount of um, uh, Americans here. We've got, um, what's that, three, six, uh, seven, eight, I think it's about eight, yeah, eight 
uh, eight and a half, nine and a half squads in total um, attacking. They've got to take eight of the 12 uh, buildings at the back here. So I've marked these, um, Martin won't be able to see these, but I've marked these with um, kind of hip control counters on the second I level. I see that, I see that. Okay, yeah. okay. okay. Yeah. All right. So um, basically, uh, you also get the option of trading in three uh, mortars for an OBA, and the OBA is quite mild. It's a four. It's a four, isn't it? Yeah. That's it. But it has also got two uh, two options of white phosphorus, and that can be quite useful. Um, so that's that's what's going on. Um, this board is a Banning Fire Productions board, um, and it's a bit crazy. Um, mm. All of this level three, two, one, you know, with buildings on it and cliff hexides and bits and pieces is all a bit tricky. I, I actually thought this was a bit more of a three player scenario. It was Germans against Brazilians against the board. Um, <laughs> trying to work out some of the line of sights was um, was tricky. The interesting thing from the Germans' point of view, they've got a hip squad, and that squad has control of a DC that can be a set DC. And the bridge is impenetrable or impassable by the vehicles, the, the big uh, 105 um, millimeter tanks. So, any but they thoughts? can cross the streams, yeah? They can cross, they the, can streams. cross the streams, yeah, yeah. Yes, they can. In the normal way, risking the, the um, right, bog yeah. and everything. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Uh, so, I guess lots of, lots of time, really, from the Americans' point of view. Um, it's just going to be getting up this hill is difficult, and that's the problem. Um, yeah. And I think my biggest concern was coming across the bridge with a set DC, um, you know, someone sitting, you know, maybe uh, here in P7, um, oh, watching yeah. that that DC, you know, getting blown up or whatever. So I kind of my my approach was like, okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna come across the uh, uh, the bridge. I'll try and figure out another way around it. So there's quite a limited approaches, isn't there? Because you have got the cliffs. That's exactly right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so here we go. Um, me as the Americans uh, come running on. Um, no big things. And then suddenly I walk straight into the heavy machine guns bore sighted location, um, wow. which you know didn't look to me like it was. It looked to me like the uh, the X4 building was going to block it. But that's actually a perfect line of sight across. So yeah. a brutal uh, down down three shot, really. Um, mm. Got the movement in the open. You can see there's the uh, yeah. the line of sight. It's not is... open ground though, is it? That's no, is so not a sort movement. The bore sight yeah. in and the leader. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. all gonna. Yeah, that's brutal. Yeah, <laughs> it was a bit <laughs> brutal. <laughs> Luckily, uh, Dwayne rolls a, an eleven, Bless and, and we kind of have a bit of joke about. <laughs> okay, well you're gonna have some um, some luck. Uh, then I managed to walk into another. Which he said was boresighted at the time, and we realised it's not boresighted because uh, there's no boresighting for smaller mortars, but mm. uh, still a, a decent chance for some um, some effects here straight away. Um, there's a potential sniper on a pin check, but nothing goes on. Um, mortars are now firing into my tanks as well. Mm. Uh, nothing there going on, um, and a little bit of advancing. So, Germans. Um, now, this is a little bit of a signature move, really, from yeah. Dwayne. He's, if we remember from his the previous scenario, where he had this perfect fallback, um, and it was a really nicely uh, ordered, concealed uh, yeah. fallback. Uh, looking here, at, you know, he's um, he's nice, uh, you know, nice uh, defense is is quite good. Um, so didn't uh, didn't bring the OBA down just yet. Um, Start to take some shots with the uh, the tanks, and we break yeah. the, uh, the the initial defenders. And you know, a nice a nice defender. And you can start to see now that the Americans are going to have problems crossing this stream yeah. with you know a a number of these. There will only be a couple of dummies in in all of this lot. Um, yeah. So we come on to turn two. Uh, start to bring the OBA down. Um, well, at least. Uh, Converts. Uh, I'll, I'll put the uh, the action request down, uh, which was uh, accurate. Um, and I can sneak up to the river. Um, we're gonna 
slows your advance right down, hasn't it? You've got you've yeah, that's right, that's right, exactly. Stop moving, advancing, yeah. That's right. So we should point out that um, this tank at the back here is called Dave. We're going to prove that Dave can do something as a tank commander. He's got an 8 minus one leader in there as well. We've got Martin being the uh, full hardy yeah. uh, attacking yeah. one. And we've got Tom being sneaky that. around the back here. Uh, we're going to see how, how this all works out for us all. Um, we uh, we spot that it's uh, a 7 0 with a Panzer Shrek up here. And. Uh, the the um, the Brazilian uh, guys actually doing quite well up here. So at this point, feeling quite good. Yeah. Um, there's a little bit of routing going on. We advance into the stream. It's only a seven zero, so you haven't got full, much firepower into because you're in open ground, aren't you? In That's the right. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So first first guys break here, uh, but German turn to. Um, down comes the um, OBA. Yeah, the OBA is uh, looking for OBA in fact there. I think I think I just I think I just moved it here at this point. Mm. Um, now at this point, I was only thinking that the OBA yeah. had two missions, uh, and you'll see I do say a little bit crazy in a bit. Um, but um, yeah, now we we messed up here. Um, so this is turn. Three, yeah. Of which I think we're still okay with, but we're going to miss a turn at some point. I think we get we get we get a bit mixed up. But anyway, yeah. the, the Brazilians are pushing pushing forward. Uh, the white phosphorus comes down, uh, doesn't really cause any any big problems uh, to. But you've the, got the benefit of the smoke. Got the benefit of the smoke, um, and I got the morale checks. Now the problem here is that it actually hinders me a little bit because. The, mm. All the um, Germans managed to pass the morale checks, and obviously you get the positive for the building in white phosphorus, and only on yes. six is it a critical um, on the coloured dice. So no criticals. The Americans or the Brazilians walking into this white phosphorus mm. actually has a bit of a problem because not only is my morale level down one because of friendly OBA, but also I'm only starting with six, and I'm not walking straight into buildings at, at this point on the you know the the earlier uh, kind of outskirts of the of the uh, the white phosphorus so that was a little bit of a problem yeah um the um uh brazilians suffering their first kind of uh casualties here as it were yeah um, you don't really want to, these brazilians to break once they're across the river do you that's it's, right uh, they're much more vulnerable yeah yeah so here's where we go wrong. So if you notice, we've gone from turn three American to turn four Axis, yeah. which which causes us a little bit of confusion a little bit later on. Yeah. Um, but we fix it later, so don't, don't panic. Um, so Germans repositioning. We get the yeah. second um, white phosphorus coming down here. That seems to have an effect. Yeah, it was. It basically it was a DM in uh, previously broken yeah. uh, guys. So that just keeping them DM there is is quite useful for me. Um, mm. And at this point, I think I'm doing okay. Um, yeah, we yeah. we took a it took a quick break just to figure out what was going on. Um, so let me just load the continuation here. Uh, okay, so we um, have a little bit of tidy up. We figure out the turn. We figure out that it's going to start to be the. This is the Allied turn four right now. Um, and so the the Americans or the, the Brazilians now are kind of on the outskirts. Um, Starting to take buildings, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, and so just got to get, the, you know, we had a, a bunch of guys um, break here, but, um, uh, you know, the, 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 actually the Germans don't have an awful lot of, of power left. They've um, got the heavy, they've got uh, some broken guys here. Um, and it's it's looking a bit tricky that you know the uh, for the Germans. Yeah, but the, what I do do like is I mean, the, like the other game. Twain is pulling back yeah. in a very sort of tidy way, isn't he? The forces That's right. are together. It's 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 a, like a planned fallback, really. That's right. Exactly. Weak, maybe, but exactly. Yeah. Um, so a little bit of um, this is the. 
What, why did you decide to put uh, the tank named Martin on like on the bridge near the Panzer Shrek and the one named Dave <laughs> right back in, you know, doing the, the, the Overwatch fight? Well, because... Tactical? This is like the quarterback position. He's he's lobbying great shells, and what? And you're you're getting all the glory. You're gonna you're gonna go in there and get all the glory. Um, all right. So now the turn count's not moving on. I don't know. Oh, here we go. So we, yeah. so, okay, here we go. We've got it back again. All right. So a um, little bit more prep firing. None of these tanks really hit anything um, mm. of any use, and I'm kind of across taking morale checks. Um, and not doing uh, great on the uh, on some of the morale checks there. Sure. At least you're getting into buildings now. Yeah, exactly. So, and, and my plan was to just ignore the southern buildings completely. Yeah. I thought, well, you know, I don't have to worry about taking those. I'm just going to try and take the eight on the mm. top here. That was the that was the plan. Yeah. Um. So we've got the guys under the bridge. Um. And I was thinking this is this is looking quite good. Uh, yeah, we've got these yeah. guys here in P5. Um, so I was pretty pleased with everything here. This is the point where I, I thought that I, I kind of threw the radio away and just, just ran the leader. And Dwayne yeah. kindly pointed out that actually um, th th I had more than just the two fire missions. I just I read it as two fire missions, but it wasn't. It was it's two WP. That's it right, was, yeah. Was, uh, yeah. So they, he got teleported back. And yeah, thanks oh, to that, was, that was good of Dwayne to point that I out. i got to say, Dwayne, by the way, excellent player great guy um he, he's um you know you don't meet these people face to face or anything um Dwayne is uh he works with heavy machinery in a mine uh, and he's a man's man I, this is the guy i know you popped in and said hello to us but um he's he's got this great voice he's like a, almost like a, a like a cowboy western style you know he's a he's a, a lovely lovely guy but with a real uh, man's man's voice and you know certainly uh, intimidated me all the way through the game but he was he was <laughs> brilliant he was absolutely brilliant he's a lovely lovely guy um he he was saying he was playing just you know either he wasn't on the board he was he was spot on he was no there was no problems at all um one day day we'll do a tour of the us and canada yeah we'll go over there we'll do it we'll take lunation rounds on the road shall we yeah <laughs> do you know what that'd be fantastic <laughs> get an rv absolutely just turn up people like Dwayne. we just turn up his house unexpectedly yeah what, what are they gonna do hey. Dwayne, we're gonna stay a month. Whatever, it'd be great. <laughs> um, so, what do we get here? We got some, we got some uh, morale checks. And again, I, I'd mentioned this to, to Dwayne. The problem with American troops here is, is that at the point where you really need them to pass morale checks, every every morale check really is expected to fail. I mean, I think yeah. you know, you just haven't got. If you can get them into positions where, um, you know, they're they're in buildings and everything, then okay, fair enough. But um, again, I mean, it was the, the issue is is that often, um, you know, they just they obviously they, they come back quickly, but uh, you just can't rely on them to to stay in the in the scenario, um, you know, when you need them to. Uh, yeah, and this was the problem here. Um, so, from you know getting into the getting into the, onto the map and getting into where I want to be to breaking each time. Um, you know, upper came again. Yeah, that's a big setback, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And so now at this point, you know, I've got one guy here, um, and I've I've managed to get this guy around the back. So the plan is to to come around the back here and start to try and take these buildings here. Um, I should mention, you know, Dwayne uh, lost his heavy machine gun here, um, and so you know, there's a potential big swing here. I've got my you know 20 20 firepower coming in against this fortified location. I can't jump into close combat. Which is what I would have liked to have done because obviously it's a fortified location. Um, so I've got these two, uh, these two guys here. Uh, you know, the the two six six sixes here, um, just looking a bit kind of like spare in a way. They need to survive um, the the upcoming fire. So uh, Axis turn five. Um, we have some failed rally attempts, and the prep fire comes in, and DMs. This guy. This is this is a nice move here to opportunity fire, um, and predominantly you know, to to get rid of the CX that was on on this guy, uh, which was which is nice. Um, and, okay, so here's so you'll see that I uh, I, have, I get a double one. Uh, we get the we get the sniper activation, and we're going to recall Dave. <laughs> <So> <laughs> he's done literally nothing all game apart from take some. You know, kind of um, uh, some 
really that's mediocre shots. And, One bullet uh, bounces off the armor, and Dave's that's it. That was off. Yeah, yeah. Um, taking the armor leader <laughs> with him. Um, so we've got uh, what have we got here. There's some uh, more DM on here. Yeah. So I, and this, yeah. So so this was me taking a shot from. Uh, I had to take choose between either breaking uh, this guy here or trying to get the, the DM, and I had to keep trying to yeah. DM these guys. Um, so. Um, so the Germans now falling back, yeah, and and really looking quite, uh, you know, a little bit in trouble. They they managed to repair the heavy, but the squad with the heavy breaks. Um, yeah. But again, I can't, you know, he's pinned, and I can't jump into close combat. Um, it's, it, and it's such a problem because of that forty-five location, just trying to yeah. break that location. Um, and you got that very strong stack on the flank, haven't you? Which you can't kind of. Get around it, right? You, can't kind of, yeah, you need the fortified building to attack that stack, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, back into the fortified location, we've got these two squads a hero, heavy machine gun, yeah. Um, and I'm looking, you know, a bit of a lemon really outside, yeah. Um, not able to do very much, just trying to break. Now, I, I know this position is really, you know, fragile, it's you know, it's yeah. potentially if I can take it, um, and I think these are dummies here, but if I can take. Um, you know these two positions here. I've got enough with this whole set of broken guys at the back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Do you know it's a, it's a very good place for the fortified building. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, he had he could put that where he wanted. I assume. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're protected from the the sort of the bottom, aren't you? The the N five yep. building. There's a cliff there. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a very very good position. So here's where I start breaking machine guns, and yeah. uh, that's you know this is where I need the big shot really against this. Uh, fortified location if I can get that um, you know again my position looks quite good my tank dribbles off the board um, up comes Tom with the idea potentially to um, abandon the tank and try and grab these two but a vehicle crew against these isn't going to look great in close combat um, mm. and uh, Martin gets all frisky mm. and mm. comes up this side of the board are there uh, There are, yeah. It's uh, it's nineteen forty four. Yeah. Uh, so um, it's a there's a pin in there. There's um, this guy gets away with it here. The um, Dwayne rolls a double six. Unlucky Ooh. on the uh, the attack over here. The the, the four down two shot from uh, these guys. And um, I do get to make this nice move around the back. Which is going to keep these guys DM'd. That is a nice win. But uh, the advancing fire shots are brutal, and literally yeah. everything gets broken on the front yeah. line. Yeah. So at this point, I have it's, it's, it's swung, <laughs> hasn't it? <laughs> it's it's broken, broken. Your seven zero leader. Yeah, and a squad at the back uh, and a couple of tanks. A squad at the back, yeah. Um, I mean, the, the the attack from the back is now the strongest attack that you have. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and you know I managed to DM these guys, so okay, that's that's kind of good. And I'm thinking, yeah. okay, I need I need the rally phase from heaven, don't I really? Um, you really do. And instead, uh, Dwayne rolls a three and a three to bring one back. Uh, I don't bring anything back at all. I think I think I might might get yeah. uh, one one guy back here. It's starting to feel desperate, isn't it? Yeah. And at this point, I resign. Um, yeah. There was yeah with all these guys broken uh, in. Uh, R uh, is it P P three? Yeah. Um, you know, there's it basically it's you know Dwayne can go on the attack. Yeah. And uh, yeah. very and, uh, easy. And the always does a salt move over there to exactly. more advance over there. Yeah. So, Dwayne, well played. You are absolute deserve a champion of uh, of the uh, the first limited rounds tournament. We have sent your board off to you. Um, you may get it by the time this is, um, has has uh, gone live. So. Congratulations, Dwayne! You were a worthy winner and and very very well played. Uh, as you said, you know you're uh, you're uh, you're in the crosshairs for next year's. Um, uh, we, I don't know if we're going to do seedings, Martin, but maybe we'll put Dwayne a number one, number one seed. So, so where are you going to put me? <laughs> Listen, when you win a game, I'll let you know. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be fine next year. You're you you're turn to shine next year. Um, so. Again, thanks to everybody that took part. Um, we had a great time playing. 
Um, and we have another hand printing board for next uh, next year's tournament. Um, we'll figure out um, sponsorship and bits and pieces. Um, it's worth noting that Dwayne also got a copy of his choice of the Kansas City guys uh, March Madness packs. He chose the players pack, I think. Um, so again, thank you to the Kansas City guys for the sponsorship of that. Um, and everyone who took part, appreciate it. And I hope, hope we get plenty of players next year. Uh, we may even have to do a preliminary round before we get into the round of 16. So, wow. uh, yeah, that's that's the, the excitement. Yeah, it's brilliant. Brilliant tournament. Excellent. So, Great um, game. Great game. Of, looked like a smashing game. It was a good game, and it was a good scenario. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I just I just couldn't couldn't yeah. get through it. I mean, the board, the board is a tricky ball to attack across that. Uh, Definitely, yeah. That one. Um, yeah. So, okay. I uh, just want to finish up with uh, Scenario of the Month or Game of the Month as uh, uh, Stu's to it. So Stu, I'll, I'll put a link down below uh, for his comments about the Scenario of the Month. There's been plenty of play, uh, both for the Dead of Winter and for the Scenario Kit one, uh, Shift of Porn. We've got two new Scenario of the Month, Game of the Month, uh, that Stu has picked. Uh, Monastir Gap uh, from uh, the Waffen Furious Fireman Waffen SS pack, uh, number two. And from the starter kit, uh, starter kit number two, uh, Legio Patria Nostra. Do you know what that means? Very Martin? good. Very good pronunciation. Did I sound like I was a, a Latin speaker? Yeah, you sound like that bloke from Barbarians on Netflix. If you, <laughs> if you, if you watch that. You tell me what's that. It's all in like... German. So <laughs> confusing. <laughs> but, um, but yeah. So we're going to try. Perhaps we'll try and play one of those at some point. Um, next time we've got a scenario that you and I played against Toby. Yeah. We played uh, Tired and Un Unsupported, which is a bit of a, an unbalanced scenario uh, that came out in one of the... Where did it come out? Was it one of the action packs? One of the, journal, one of the journals, wasn't it? Journal 4, I think. Yeah. Um, and and, we're, and uh, we're, we're getting Toby to, to prove that it can be won. That's the plan. Is that's his, he's going to try. That's his mission. That's he's his mission. Try, yeah, take the bad side yeah. and see if he can be won. Um, yeah. We'll obviously put a good game up against him and we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Um, anything else on your side, Martin? No, absolutely not. No, no. Okay, well, okay. So I guess <laughs> until next week, we'll see you all. See you then. Take care, all. Bye bye. <laughs>